We are here with Ben Fon Torres, who has been representing and covering the music scene, the social scene, the cultural scene in San Francisco for decades and decades and decades. Okay, I'll Holy stop. Shut up. He was at some 50 years ago, Summer of Love, covering? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I was here during the Summer of Love, but I couldn't say that I was covering it. I was kind of discovering it. And I was a student at SF State around that time, 65, 66. And so uh, my friends and I would venture into the neighborhood, but I was also working. And in fact, the weird thing is, thinking back to the actual summer of love, the media one, uh, <laughs> I was actually on radio on a station that became a rock station, KFOG, but at that time was dispensing elevator music. It was beautiful music. And it was sort of uh, strings and instrumentals and romantic songs. And I was just doing this all night show out of Ghirardelli Square, playing the squarest records possible. And then, before and after, it would be, of course, all the latest music that people were listening to. Uh, me too, uh, rock and roll. And so, uh, there goes the exhibit. Hmm. Anyway, so it was a weird life, but uh, enjoyable to be on radio in the at that time, the fifth largest market in the country. Not bad, even though it was a shit job, but still, you're on the air. And then the rest of the time, you're just goofing around. So it was a pretty good summer. What's the first thing to come to mind for most memorable thing about the era for you? The desire for freedom. Mm. Um, the tremendous wish for freedom. And in some cases, the practice of freedom but it was uh, illusory because it wasn't real free. Nothing is really free, you know? Uh, it's just another word. Uh, <laughs> Freedom's just another word for... Nothing left to lose. <laughs> Freedom. And so, uh, be because I come from journalism, I always, was always more objective and more distanced from it. I didn't wade into the scene. I had many friends, there were many parties, we tried many things, uh, but I was also a working person and getting jobs like at, on radio and then at a magazine and then Rolling Stone came along uh, in November of 1967, so another 50th anniversary, and then I got real busy once I hooked up with them. Uh, so it was always a little professional detachment, at the same time an admiration for the fact that young people were causing such a seismic shift in the cultural, the social, the political, the artistic, and the musical landscapes. It was an amazing, amazing achievement. And you were kind of like a Jim Marshall in a way on the photography side where you were in it, you were part of the scene, you knew the people, but you were covering it and capturing it too. Right. You had an insider's view. And I swore much less than Jim Marshall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with us swearing anyway? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was from another era actually. You know, he was a few years older. So he, it's like Bill Graham. Uh, the same thing of, all right, I dig the scene, but what's in it for me? You know, uh, what's my part? What's my piece of this? And they were really... Uh, they, they had their agenda. They had their priorities. Yeah, I guess the balance of business to pleasure for them was more business, whereas you got into it as well. It was your job, but you got into it anyway. Yeah, yeah. no, it was just too much fun to, to not at least participate a little bit. And, of course, by doing that, you know, it, it's sort of like uh, a precursor to uh, the personal journalism that uh, took place a few years later. Because if you're part of the scene, you can really be more... Uh, uh, accurate in describing the sensations that people are going through and from conversations that are off the record or on the record, whatever it is, they're telling you their aspirations and what they really want to derive from the scene, what they see themselves doing in the future, what their concerns are about society. Oh, it's a man walking past in his pajamas, I think, <laughs> with a bow tie. Um, and so you, you, you really got really more of a sense of what this was all about, mm. even without being fully participating in it. Speaking of what it's all about, what's the most important thing to remember or take away that resonates today, half a century later? Well, you've got to take care of yourself. 
Uh, I think that's what it was. It was communal living. It was, uh, to a certain extent, free love and, and uh, use of drugs and experimentation and, and tripping and having adventures. All of that was fine, but in the end, you do have to pay the rent. You do have to take care of your health. Uh, those were health especially what became a factor that, that pretty much brought down the scene in the Haight-Ashbury, the uh, profusion of uh, bad drugs. And although uh, David Smith and his staff at the medical clinic were heroic in serving the community, uh, there was such a flood of people that with dealers coming in with uh, uh, unknown and unknowable drugs and ripping people off, and turning them on to bad stuff, uh, it led to a, a very early uh, quieting of the scene. You know, within half a year, the summer was over in more ways than one. We thank you so much for joining us. And now, Sherlove, we always love to wrap with a oh. hug. <laughs>